We're going to try and answer the question of, now I've got a bunch of books, what do I do now? It'll be a, a brief series. Uh, we'll try to talk a little bit about um, direct sale, a little bit about auctions, whether they be eBay or Sotheby's, whether you should look into consignment or uh, a commission sale. Or the heck with everything else, we're just going to donate them to either Salvation Army or, if it's a nice collection, maybe my alma mater. We won't have any solid answers for you, but we will try to provide enough information that you can make an informed decision of what to do now. And the first step in that is to determine what do you have? What do I have? Um, is it a box of books from Grandma's attic? Is it uh, a room full of books from a lifetime of good reading? Or is it a carefully assembled collection of books that I've put together for 30 or 40 years? In each of those cases, uh, you should go out and get some help, whether it's uh, from a fellow collector or a bookseller or someone else that you have a relationship with. The first thing is to, to talk a little bit about these things. And then, if it's uh, a box of books from Grandma, take them to the local bookseller. Uh, let's see what's there and uh, let them tell you a little bit about what's there. Now, don't expect it to be a completely free Thing, although many, many bookstores do that, but you should respect the time of those people. Uh, you may also want to uh, make an inventory. If you have a large collection that has a bunch of important books, then you need to have a, an inventory that may even go into the various printings and publishers and that sort of thing because ultimately the buyer of such things is going to want to know that. You also need to uh, take that inventory and expand upon it, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, on the other hand, if it's just grandma's books, don't waste your time uh, putting together an inventory. Just let a friend look at it and see what sort of things are in there. Now, looking at the process a little closer, we'll take you to the St. Petersburg Public Library, our local library, recently had an Antiques Roadshow Day. And we'll look closely, or a little more closely, at the process of what goes on when somebody looks at a few books and sort of makes the determination of values. What have you brought us today? Okay. Um, well, this is, maybe I guess I'll start with this. This is, my, this is a four volume. I just brought one volume in. I've got four volumes. One of, the, one of the four has a little bit of a blemish on the cover. But everything here is family heirloom, so I'm not, I'm not wanting to sell it. But I would still like to know if there's any. We're not here to buy them. So yeah, we're here to do that. Okay. Let me take a quick look at the other sure. things first and then come back. And talk. That's not, it's not really a book, but it's got a lot of really nice, I don't know if they're called the crafts or what's there, but... And this is a children's book from around the turn of the century. Not real. Sixty-seven years old. You know, actually, it's a little earlier than that. I would take him to a seamstress. Uh, 
Okay, let's start with this one. Um, and I'm starting here because this is the one that has the least value. Okay. In spite of the fact that it is the one that has, that's the oldest. Uh, this is 1880, 1890. Uh, this is a, a chromolithograph. Uh, chromolithography was used from about 1870 to 1910, thereabouts. And it's um, an early uh, color printing process. You can always tell them because they have a little bit of a sheen, because that sheen was an emulsion that fixed the colors in place. It, um, the, the unfortunate part of this is that while they spent a lot of uh, their resources on the cover, they didn't spend much on the interior. And in fact, they used a real cheap paper to do their printing on. They don't have any color pictures. They do have some other pictures here. Uh, these are, for the most part, wood engraving, which was a sort of standard form of illustration in that time period. Again, the... Um, you can see that it... Areas here, it's kind of muddy. It's not real sharp and clear. That's because the publisher didn't give it to you. <laughs> and they also used a real cheap paper, and that's why the paper is turning kind of yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got a high acid content. And so it, it just gets worse and worse, and it flakes more and more. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, on today's market, this is just a uh, maybe a 25 at the most individually. Okay. If it was in my shop, I'd probably make it 10. $10. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. This is of a period. Um, again, it's late 18, early 1900s. Probably the same person had this. Had this. I, I think it was from my dad's side. This is from my mom's side. Yeah, that's definitely from my dad's, and I think that is too. Yeah. Is there, there, they're similar in a lot of ways, although they're different areas. This is from a household, a well-read household, and also probably a urban household. Um, the, one of the things that happened in the late 19th century is the Americans began to gather up some culture. And so there would have been a specific Dickens probably in the show as well. These are reproductions of the illustrations that were originally in Dickens' work. Um, at the time, they are by the uh, famous illustrators of the George Scripture of Paul Black They were well known illustrators. So that the Christmas Carol is in the um, They are reprints of things that had been done earlier, and so they don't have giant value. And also the, the slip case here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> That's a better word than I would have used. Yeah. No, I know it is. But, yeah. So um, so anyway, this in nice condition is a seventy five hundred dollar. In this condition we're talking more like twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's just good to know. And this is the good set, of course. Uh, I don't know how much you know about Carvel. 
No, nothing. She was uh, the original yellow journalist, uh, Mark Corrector, as they called him at the time. She also did a, a multi volume biography of uh, Rockefeller as well. Uh, this one, of course, is like Lincoln, which she did early on. It's nicely printed, and you see the title page is in two colors, and it's nicely designed, that sort of thing. Um, and I'm assuming that all of the volumes, this is a four volume, so right. I'm assuming all of the volumes are in somewhat the same condition. They're in the same, exact same condition, except one of the four does have a bit of a blemish. There's a bit of a blemish right here from mm -hmm. something, I don't know. Uh, then the set is probably about a hundred and a half. Those are retail values. And I, you might sometime look and see who Ida Tarbell is. She's an interesting character. Yeah, I know you are. I mean, I, I read about them long, long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have pictured a person like that doing a book about Lincoln. But, but yeah, I'll have to do that. I'll have to do that. Okay. So thank right. you very much. I'm glad you came today. And I, um, I know the library appreciates it as well. And there you have it. It's a relatively simple process. It can give you lots of information in a short period of time and give you the whys and wherefores of why something might have value or not and a good deal of information along that line. Next time we'll talk something about uh, direct sale. We'll try to figure out if that might be the proper option for you. We'll also talk something about the op options of auctions or um, maybe you should be looking at a commission or consignment sale or even a donation, whether we're talking about Salvation Army on one hand or your alma mater on the other. In any case, we look forward to talking to you again real soon.